Good evening, dear guests. I'm so happy to welcome all of you to our 15th annual Student Award Ceremony, The Truth About the Holocaust and the Stalin Regime Repression. I wish we could do this in person, but current circumstances won't allow it, so Zoom it is. This won't stop us from having a wonderful and meaningful event. We will have amazing performances by many talented people and inspirational stories and speeches by leaders of our community and Holocaust survivors. So without further ado, let's begin. I would like to invite the founder and president of the Prachna Foundation, my dear friend, Ludmila Prachna, to say a couple of words. Dear friends, I'm so happy and proud of all of the accomplishments that our foundation has achieved. We now have the Holocaust, the Stalin regime repression, as part of the curriculum in New Jersey schools. This is a topic that is very important for our young generation to learn, remember, and teach their children, so they always remember and never forget. This is all possible because of our wonderful volunteers, performers, our Holocaust survivors, and of course, all of you. I thank you all from my from the bottom of my heart and hope you enjoy our program. I would like to ask everyone to please stand up for a moment of silence in memory of the victims of the Holocaust. Thank you. I would like to invite Remy Lerner, who has been presenting at our annual event since he was six years old. I would like for Remy to read the poem written by Ludmila Prachina. People of the world, rise up for a minute and awaken yourselves and ask yourselves, have I done everything I could? For my children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, so that they never forget and they always remember. It gives me great pleasure to introduce my rabbi and educator, Rabbi Mordechai Kanelski, the executive director of Bris Abraham Congregation of Hillsdale, New Jersey. I think it's a very important moment to get together here and to commemorate the Holocaust and to commemorate what happened 75 years ago that Auschwitz was liberated. I think it's not just a moment to remember for the people that are in the older generation who are Holocaust survivors or children of Holocaust survivors, but I think with today's society that we live in, especially here in the state of New Jersey, where we witnesses the tragedy that happened a month ago in Jersey City and was going on in any, in any other place, it's a moment for us to remember, to teach, and not to forget. The second thing is, we should all have respect one to another. When I'm coming into our society, we all look different. We all have five fingers. Not one finger is the same as the second one. Our job is to unite us all together. And therefore I want to say thank you to you, Ludmila, for uniting us. You are doing a wonderful job. You are coming to my office many times, and the whole purpose of your meeting is how we could unite everybody. Thank you. 
Dear ladies and gentlemen, we're all gathered here today, even if we're meeting over the Zoom, to revisit the horrors and analyze the causes of the Holocaust and many other human catastrophes in history, like the Stalinist repressions, Mao's cultural revolution, etc. The idea was always an illusionary goal of forced superiority of one group over the other with senseless loss of life and irreparable damage. The terrifying fact is that unfortunately it is not the thing of the past. Today we still have the North Korea, Rwanda, Myanmar, just to name a few. Humans quickly forget the important lessons of the past and are easily driven into same ideas and predicaments. Speaking of political correctness, I would like to mention that there are a few Jewish organizations which have turned away from supporting this event about Holocaust because it probably may be detrimental to their public image and social media profiles. Political correctness is not harmless and it is in fact very powerful. Political correctness restricts people from calling things their proper names and by doing so blurs the distinction between good and evil. Achieving restriction of free speech and confusion is the perfect milieu for manipulation and control. Actually, the definitions of right and wrong are very clearly delineated in the Bible, which is a good read, and is in fact the base of constitution in this country. Unfortunately, the divine principles delineated there are being diluted, manipulated, and distorted. If we follow the Bible, the slogan of today should be all lives matter and no other stated way. We just celebrated Martin Luther King's day last week, a man who followed the Bible in his fight for justice and racial equality. He stood in strong opposition to the Black Panthers and Black Power movements, which had very different ideas and aims. The white supremacy movements and many other radical groups are similarly very ugly reality of our times. We all do have the responsibility to speak out and oppose this polarization and radicalism. Rewriting and twisting history to fit a certain political narrative is always a bad omen. Introducing it into public education of children is a whole new level. History should be preserved as objectively as possible and analyzed from the point of view of the times when those events took place. We should extract important lessons from the past and apply them to present times. This program by the Prachin Foundation came to light for this exact reason. It is hard to believe that many places in the world refuse to teach about Holocaust and even dare to deny that it ever took place. Sadly, many trends that made Holocaust possible, like the silence of majority of people and their passive tolerance of political propaganda are so evident today. The words of Hitler's propaganda mastermind, Goebbels, always ring in my ears. When a lie is repeated 1000 times, it becomes the truth. Lastly, bending and twisting the law when applied to different groups is always, is already a manifestation of injustice. Driven by any agenda or narrative, it is absolutely unacceptable and evil. Today, it is the cause of skyrocketing crime, rising crime, especially in our big cities and affecting mostly the communities where lower socioeconomic groups and many minorities live. In every generation, we should defend our freedom and basic human rights and fight for them anew. 
a principle from Pesach Haggadah. I realize that my speech perhaps has not been politically correct, but I speak from the heart and I believe that this is the right thing to do. I want to thank the Prahim Foundation for, preser for persevering with this event despite all the challenges and for doing this important work. After all those years, it has never been as relevant as it is today. I'm very proud to be a part of this event. And I want to thank Ludmila Prahina personally for everything that she did and continues to do, for her courage and her determination. God bless you and thank you. I am proud to introduce the following performer, David Belkin from Sackler Medical School, first year. Executive Director of the New Jersey Commission Holocaust Education. Dr. Winkler opened our annual awards ceremony year after year. Each year he presented our winners trophies and certificates. Our foundation developed a high school curriculum, Stalin and his repressive regime, in collaboration with the Holocaust Education Commission, and Paul Winkler was our project coordinator. Thanks to Dr. Paul Winkler, since 2012, every school in New Jersey takes a few hours each year to study about this tragedy comparable to the Holocaust. Today, we see the results of this effort with the work of 62 students from schools and colleges who submitted their creative work for this competition. The evils we must teach our children so that their children will teach their children and people will not forget 
the evils that occurred because of bias and prejudice and bigotry, whether we call it a holocaust, a massacre, an atrocity. If it had happened years ago, we wouldn't have had that word to say a genocide of what occurred. But man's inhumanity to man. It's like when you look at it, you know that it's evil. And we in New Jersey, working with the Protkin Society, about two years ago, we were approached, the commission, that the evils of Stalin aren't talked about. And I said to the group, what do you mean? It's in the textbooks. We know the things that he did. And we did a survey. And we went around the schools and we sent information out. And sure enough, the students and the staff knew very little about the evils perpetrated on the people. I'm so happy to introduce Piano Trio Pre V D. Sisters Diviana, Ria, Vina, Lokonout from Fairlawn. proud to present a speech from Ing Arbacher, survivor of the Holocaust. Ing is an accomplished author who has published multiple books about the events and experiences during the Second World War. Hello everybody, I'm Inge Auerbacher and I live in New York City. And it is so important to learn from our past and also to be better people better educated people in the future. And I, a Holocaust survivor, I spent three years between age of seven and 10 at the Terezin concentration camp in Czechoslovakia. Now I'm an author of six books and three are on my life. And the first one is very important, especially for younger children. And it is called, I am a star. And I want to read to you a short poem, who I am. I want you to know more about me and then I will talk to you some more. And here is the poem, who am I? I'm the tears that never dry. I am the flame that touched the sky. One of the ashes, out of the ashes, I was born. Who am I? Who am I? I am the life our loved ones knew. 
I am the dream that has come true. I am the song that was never heard. Who am I? I am. I'm happiness and sorrow. I'm yesterday and tomorrow. I bear the names of unknown faces from different places. I am the silent, many silent girls and boys. I'm here today and be their voice. I'm a new link on a broken chain. Who am I? I am, I am. It's very important to do everything possible to have peace. For instance, I live in a house, in a row house, and on one side is a very devout Muslim family. We get along very well. They're from Bangladesh. And another family from is Hindu. They are from India originally. And then there's a Christian house, and I'm Jewish. Four of the religions of the world, the most important religions of the world, live side by side. I am Jewish. And it is so important to get to know other people, to work for peace, to be friends with people, to love one another. And I always say, all people have red blood. It's, it doesn't matter who you are. Blood is red for everybody. And um, I think to have peace, we want peace in this world. We want to live together. It is so important to get to know one another. No. Dear children, we are all one family. The way to make it a better world is to learn from each other, education. And we all want peace. There are different words for peace. We say in Hebrew, we say shalom. It means hello and goodbye. Arab people say uh, salam alaikum, shalom. And we all need to make a circle around the world, hold hands and say, we are one. Thank you. I'd like to welcome the educational address from Douglas Servi, Director of State of New Jersey Commission on Holocaust Education. Good evening, everyone. My name is Doug Servi. I'm the Executive Director of the New Jersey Commission on Holocaust Education. 
And once it again, has gave me a great deal of pleasure to Lamita and her foundation for the awards that are given to these students today and the hard work that they have done in preparing for this very, very important program. Needless to say, in the present world that we live in, there's a lot of work to do. And I thank you very much for the foundation and the work that they have done over the years. The commission is very, very happy with this. And on behalf of the New Jersey Commission, I would like to congratulate everyone and what they have done this evening. Be careful and be safe out there. Thank you very much. I would also like to welcome Hank Bitten, Executive Director of the New Jersey Social Studies Network News. Did you know that what you say or speak today may only be remembered for a few moments, but what you write is likely to be remembered for centuries? Uh, your memories may fade uh, following this video recording, but it is likely that someone in 2100, or perhaps in 200 years from now, 2322, will find this recording, listen to it, and our voices will be remembered. What we write endures forever. I'm currently researching uh, the stories of ordinary people living in New Jersey at the time of the American Revolution 250 years ago. They are ordinary people, uh, men and women, children and adults, Native Americans and African Americans. Uh, they wrote in diaries, they wrote letters, they kept receipts, they received pensions. I have found their remarkable stories 250 years later. I found them in libraries at the New Jersey Historical Society and in other places online. The poems, essays, videos that you are recording will definitely be read by someone in the future. In many ways, we are living in the golden age of American democracy and prosperity. But in real time, we are living in fear. We are seeing bullying, prejudice, violence. We are seeing hatred. Your voice speaks for justice. Your voice speaks about understanding. Your voices speak for acts of kindness. And so I ask you to continue to speak on behalf of the ordinary people living in the Ukraine, Russia, Myanmar, China, uh, Iran, Syria, North Korea, and in the United States of America. I congratulate all of you for participating in this contest, and a particular uh, thank you and congratulations to those of you who are receiving recognition this evening. Your voice is critically important, and you are making a difference in the lives of many and a difference in our world. The stakes are very, very high. The barriers are also very high. But your voice of hope and truth for equality, for acceptance, is what we need to hear. Thank you. In 2009, David Silverman was awarded for the book Like a Star in the Darkness. This book deals with the heroism of Janice Lipke under Nazi, Nazi occupation, he and his family members and friends in Riga, Latvia, saved more than 50 Jews. Fast forward to today, Erica Limick, a 12th grade student from Fairland High School, who will be doing a presentation about the Righteous Among Nations, non-Jewish individuals who have been honored for risking and giving their lives to save and help the Jewish people during the Holocaust. Dear guests, thank you for joining us here today. When we try to piece together the magnitude of any tragedy, we judge its impact on society based on the suffering of its victims primarily. What many of us often forget is to look for the helpers and find the stories of heroic acts of human decency to aid the vulnerable. The Prahin Foundation has been working for years to preserve the memories of those who suffered as a result of the Holocaust and Stalinist repression. And as we continue to keep the flame of their legacy alive, we find it equally important to commemorate and honor those that risk their well being to save the lives of the targeted. The Righteous Among the Nations is a title bestowed on the non-Jews who risked their lives during the Holocaust to save Jews from the genocide by the Nazis for reasons grounded in altruism. 
Many of these heroes lived under constant fear of denunciation and persecution for their protective efforts, risking severe punishment, including incarceration in camps, a brutal death, or public condemnation. As of the 1st of January in 2020, the Righteous Among the Nation Award has been made out to 27,712 individuals from over 50 different countries. This serves as a very powerful testimony to the fact that even when humanity seems to be lost, the human will to uplift others through the goodness of their hearts will remain in triumph. Dino Bartali, an Italian cyclist that won Tour de France twice, and used his sporting fame to help save the lives of many Jewish people by hiding and handing over exit visas to Jews to help them escape transportation to the death camps, is a prime example of a hero grounded in humility, saying his famous lines, good is something you do, not something you talk about. Some middle medals are pinned to your soul, not to your jacket. With these words, Portali shows that peaceful resistance to injustice through the means of common goodness is within reach of every individual. His award is something that he carries deep in his spiritual makeup, a form of recognition to his dangerous yet life-saving efforts. We will now present a brief documentary shining further light on these brave individuals and their sacrifices during the Holocaust that aid us in understanding our role as humans in the presence of suffering today. Thank you for your attention and we hope you enjoy. Quelle était votre relation avec les Juifs avant la guerre Mais écoutez, c'est très difficile à expliquer, mais on, on ne parle pas de ça, il n'y avait pas de différence. Et c'est, c'est comment que vous avez pensé à sauver les Juifs Bon, parce que... Là, ici, euh... Oui, pourquoi Parce que euh, j'étais institutrice et j'ai vu des enfants, d'abord qui venaient avec une étoile et puis qui ne venaient plus du tout à l'école. Puis j'étais à leur maison, on sonnait en disant pourquoi la petite n'est pas venue à l'école aujourd'hui. On m'a dit, mais ils ont été raflés par les Allemands. Alors bon, tout d'un coup, vous savez, c'est comme un, un voile qui se déchire. Hein. J'avais une vie normale avant. Souvent, ma vie s'arrête à 9 ans. Je suis rentré fin 42 dans la Résistance, qui était une organisation absolument extraordinaire. Où nous sommes arrivés à cacher quand même euh, 3000 enfants. Ils ont tous euh, survécu. André est venu chez nous et elle est surtout venue pour prendre mon, mon petit frère. Bien sûr que c'était un travail dangereux, bien sûr. Seulement, je dis toujours, c'était moins dangereux pour moi, hein, avec mes cheveux blancs et mes yeux bleus, c'était moins dangereux pour moi que, que pour une personne juive. Et les Allemands, vous savez, ils ont toujours agi par, par étapes. Ils ont enfermé les gens dans une espèce de, de, de toile d'araignée. Au début, on arrêtait que les Juifs étrangers. Quand alors les autorités belges disaient, mais qu'est-ce que vous faites Ils disaient, ce ne sont pas vos citoyens. Et quand on a commencé à arrêter les enfants, euh, qui était né ici, euh, c'est à ce moment-là qu'on s'est dit il y a quelque chose qui ne va pas. Ils ont arrêté des enfants de 6 mois et même de 6 semaines. Et la fin est d'accord avec moi. Et moi j'avais euh, 12 ans. 11, 12 ans. Et elle m'a dit voilà, tu vas avec le petit frère sous le bras, déjà un garçon de 11 ans, avec un petit gosse de, de 20 mois, c'est déjà pas habituel, normal. normal. Et puis il fallait que là, sur cette euh, place, il y avait des terminus, et elle m'a dit, André, moi tu ne me verras pas, mais, là. mais moi je te verrai. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Seulement elle m'a dit, tu vas remettre l'enfant à une dame dans le tram. Est-ce que vous avez eu peur quand vous étiez à la distance J'ai eu peur quand j'avais des enfants avec moi, mais quand j'étais toute seule, non. Mais prendre un train avec cinq ou six enfants, où vous allez conduire au fin fond de la Belgique dans des, dans des fermes et qu'il y a le train qui s'arrête et des Allemands qui montent dans le train, à ce moment-là, on a peur. Il y a beaucoup de femmes qui montent dans le train. Et moi, j'avais très peur, un, de la Gestapo, deux, de me tromper de femme. Ben, j'allais donner mon petit frère. Alors, j'avais très peur. J'ai, surtout que 
On dirait, il m'a dit, il y a une dame qui, qui sera là. Mais elle n'a pas décrite. Elle n'a pas dit, elle sera grosse, petite, main, grande, blonde. Mais elle m'a dit, tu verras, elle sera aimable et gentille avec l'enfant. Comme ça, alors je suis rentré dans ce train. J'avais très peur. Et pour lui et pour moi. Et puis, il y a une dame qui était vraiment adorable, gentille. Elle m'a dit, mais quel beau petit bébé, etc. J'ai pris le risque. Je lui ai donné l'enfant. Et puis je suis parti, très vite. Et je n'ai été tranquille que quand André nous a dit qu'il est bien arrivé. Quand il y avait une rafle, parfois les parents passaient l'enfant. Il y avait des jardins avec des murs. Ils passaient les enfants au-dessus de murs. Et les gens les recueillaient. Et un jour, j'ai été comme ça appelé dans une famille qui avait recueilli au-dessus du mur d'un jardin une petite fille de 10-12 ans. Et je suis allée pour la chercher. Et au moment où je suis, c'était un café, où je rentre dans ce café, il y a de la Gestapo qui est entrée. Vous savez, la Gestapo, on les voyait de loin parce qu'il avait des, 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 des grottes, des longs manteaux noirs jusque là. Et, ils sont venus, ils m'ont demandé si ce que je faisais là, je vais bah, lui prendre une tasse de café. Parce que vous savez, ici dans ce quartier, il y a beaucoup de juifs qui viennent. Est-ce que vous connaissez les autres je, Moi je ne connais personne. Ah, J'avais soif, je suis venu prendre une tasse de café. On m'a placé à Éprave. Vous savez, la résistance était organisée, on peut difficilement expliquer ça aujourd'hui. Mais nous étions une, une dizaine de femmes. Personne ne connaissait le vrai nom de l'autre. Non. non. Et personne ne connaissait l'adresse de l'autre non plus. De telle manière que si une d'entre nous était arrêtée, elle ne pouvait pas dire où habitait, où habitait l'autre, comment s'appelait l'autre. Nous avions tous des noms d'emprunt et euh, nous avions tous des faux papiers et on ne disait pas les uns aux autres où on habitait. On se voyait tous les jours, mais on ne se disait pas où on habitait. I'm so happy to introduce another talented performer, Durville Pujara, Bergen Tech High School Ridgewood resident. <laughs> to present Ina Swanson, a published author and accomplished comedian with her talented kids, which you may have seen in famous TV shows like Billions and more. They will be reading poems written by Holocaust victims as well as doing a music program. It is um, by connecting to the story in a personal way. We are artists and storytellers and I find that what is a really powerful thing is to witness the stories of people who have lived through this experience. Um, there is a book that I think is particularly beautiful. It is called I Never Saw Another Butterfly. And in this book are the artworks, drawings, and poetry by the children who were held in the ghetto at Terrazan. Um, and I will be reading poems by a child named Teddy from Terrazan. At Terrazan. When a new child comes, everything seems strange to him. What? On the ground I have to lie? Eat black potatoes? No, not I. I've got to stay. It's dirty here. The floor, why look, it's dirt, I fear. And I'm supposed to sleep on it? I'll get all dirty. Hear the sound of shouting cries. And also many flies. Everyone knows flies carry disease. Ooh, something bit me! Wasn't that a bed bug? Here in Terrazan, life is hell. But when I'll go home again, I can't yet tell. For my first poem, I will be reading The Butterfly by Pavel Friedman, written in 1942. 
the last, the very last, so richly, brightly, dazzlingly yellow. Perhaps if the sun's tears would sing against a white stone, such, such a yellow. It carried lately way up high. It went away, I'm sure, because it wished to kiss the world goodbye. For seven weeks, I've lived in here, penned up inside this ghetto. But I have found what I love here. The dandelions call to me and the white chestnut branches in the court. Only I never saw another butterfly. That butterfly was the last one. Butterflies don't live in here in the ghetto. Man proposes, God disposes. By Miroslav Kosyuk, Hannah Flowey, and Bachner. This was made in 1944. He was helpless back in Prague, and who was rich before? He's a poor soul here in Terrazan. His body's bruised and sore. Who was toughened up before, he'll survive these days. But who was used to servants, will sink into his grave. I'd Like to Go Alone by Alena Sinovka. I'd like to go away alone, where there are other nicer people, somewhere into the far unknown, there where no one kills another. Maybe more of us, a thousand strong, We'll reach this goal before too long. Alena Sanovka was born in Prague on September 24, 1926, and deported to Terezin on December 22, 1942. She was 16. She returned home after the liberation. The Little Mouse. This was by the same three people that wrote the poem I previously read. A mouse he sat upon a shelf, catching fleas in his coat of fur. But he couldn't catch her. What chagrin? She'd hidden way inside his skin. He turned and wriggled, knew no rest. That flea was such a nasty pest. His daddy came and searched his coat. He caught the flea and off he ran to cook her in the frying pan. The little mouse cried, come and see. For lunch we bought a nice fat flea. My last poem will be I Am a Jew by Franta Bus. I am a Jew and will be a Jew forever. Even if I should die from hunger, never will I submit. I will always fight for my people on my honor. I will never be ashamed of them. I give my word. I am proud of my people, how dignified they are. And even though I am suppressed, I will always come back to life. Please welcome Ava Defino, a senior in Fairland High School and author of the poem, The Melodies of Auschwitz. Hi, my name is Ava Defino. I'm a senior at Fairland High School and I wrote a poem and drew a picture to accompany the poem. This is my picture and some background on my poem. My poem's called The Melodies of Auschwitz and this is the picture that I drew to accompany it. Some background is I wrote the poem and drew the picture to kind of depict the um, the Jewish musicians who were imprisoned in Auschwitz, who were forced to play music um, essentially for the um, Nazi guards as a way to lift their spirits, but also kind of to deceive the, the people who were being taken to the gas chambers. So as the people were being taken to the gas chambers. These musicians were playing their music, these nice melodies as this atrocity was happening in front of their eyes. So in my picture, I wanted to depict someone who was being blinded by music um, and kind of hiding behind it. And I study music, so I wanted the melody over the eyes to symbolize something, so I actually um, wrote the melody to a song from Madame Butterfly, which is um, 
one of the songs that um, a musician who survived Auschwitz actually said in a first-hand account that she would often perform. She was a singer. So I took inspiration from that a little bit. Um, so this is my poem, The Melodies of Auschwitz. A symphony of tranquility, the songs of the departed. I play the chords as the masses move towards the chambers on shore. The notes that fill the air bless the ears of those who care to listen to the sound of death. As we harmonize our melodies, the men in uniform kill senselessly, most innocents die chemically or through worse acts of devilry. But Madame Butterfly echoes through the camp, a juxtaposition of our suffering. Death is the dissonance of our chords. So, the soft music and the sound of suffering fills the air as we wait for our time to join the departed, for we must ignore the pain to entertain. Thank you. To present awards and certificates of participation, please welcome Natalia Prachina, humanitarian, regenerative farmer, environmental advocate, and seed keeper. Dear guests, 15 years ago, we commenced on our mission, Young Generation Always Remembers. Many young people have grown up with our foundation, contributing their time and inspiration year after year and participating in the literary award ceremonies. We want to acknowledge the parents and teachers who too make it their mission to teach their children and grandchildren about the humanities and the history of the Holocaust and all genocide that has affected many lives. Today, we are grateful to present appreciation awards to the youth for their contributions during the foundation's 15 years. Thank you. All certificates and awards will be mailed to our participants. Teresa Soch, Remy Lerner, David Belkin, Divyana Lucknuth, Ria Lucknuth, Vina Lucknuth, Erica Linick, Druvil Puhara, Ryan Vincent, Reynal Vincent, Ava Swinton, Alexa Swinton, Maxime Swinton, and for an outstanding poem that was chosen from over 50 entries, we are happy to award Ava Defino a Certificate of Accomplishment. To lighten up the mood, I'm so happy to introduce Marina Belkin Students, a piano duet by Ryan and Rainel Vincent. participants and children performing we would like to thank you again and we will send each of one of you a participation certificate we are very honored to welcome Sammy Steigman a Holocaust survivor a friend of mine and a motivational speaker to offer a closing speech uh, good evening everybody my name is Sammy Steigman I'm a Holocaust survivor a child of Holocaust survivors I'm also a motivational speaker and I served in the Israeli Air Force from 1962 to 1965. My mission in life is to educate the next generation. But in addition to me talking about the Holocaust, uh, Ludmila Prachina, my dear friend, and her organization, the Prachin Foundation, they also talk about another tragedy that very few people know, and this is 
the Stalinist oppression regime. Uh, the Holocaust is the biggest crime, the most recorded crime in human history. And most of the people believe that Hitler was the biggest murderer. But that is not true. As a matter of fact, Stalin was a bigger murderer. Hitler, with the Nazi party and the uh, other collaborators worldwide, murdered 11 million people, of which 6 million were Jews. But they were not German people. Stalin, on the other hand, murdered between 20 million and 30 million of his own people, Russians. Uh, and very few people know about it. And that's why I want uh, to say thank you and uh, to Ludmila for educating the next generation about this particular tragedy. And I am extremely proud to be part of this event. Uh, I want to say again, uh, God bless America. God bless Israel. I'm Israel High, and God bless all of you. Thank you.